Mr. Mike Lowry, Mr. Nadar, trustees and members of the Shiv Nadar Foundation, members of the Shiv Nadar University Court, members of the Shiv Nadar University Executive Council, Vice Chancellor Rupa Ghosh, President Rajesh Sarup, directors, my fellow faculty and staff, distinguished guests, starts of today, graduating seniors, graduating batch of 2017. <laughs> students, parents, and all have assembled at Shivnada's third convocation today. This is a great moment for the Shivnada University as we come together to celebrate our third convocation. This day belongs to the th third batch of students of Shivnada University, just about to become our alumni. It seems like only yesterday that we celebrated our first convocation. When you are building a diverse university of this magnitude, days go by fast. Every day presents a new challenge and a new opportunity. Our only constants are quality students like you all, stellar faculty, and dedicated staff. We have, in this short period since first convocation, we have added a new school in management, new departments in governance and international relations, bachelors in business, and approved a new program in the area of national need in water science and policy. And, but uh, still, we have a long way to go. While we are strenuously in the process of strenuously building this uh, university, I thought the world should know what your alma mater is all about so that they understand how all of you guys stand out. A famous computer scientist, Dr. Richard Dijkstra, noted that 66 institutions in the Western world have been in continuous, visible identity since 1530. Other than Roman Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, parliaments of Ireland and the Isle of Men, the other 62 are Guess what? Universities. Yes, universities. That too since 1530. As the chancellor of this great university, one question that always goes through my mind is, what should this university represent or embody? What will make Srinada University immortal? Of course, this university originated as a result of our founder, Mr. Nadar, Nadar's conviction that, quote, education is and will be the most powerful tool for any individual or social change, and we must do all it takes to facilitate it, unquote. Okay. Now, is it just education for the sake of education? We can draw from a similar but uh, different context expression in art credited to 19th century f French philosopher Victor Cousin and French poet and critic Théophile Gautier. And it says, L'art pour l'art. That is, art for art's sake. It's like poem for poem's sake. Some feel that artistic pursuit is its own justification and has value. Whereas others, such as uh, Frederick Nietzsche, have said, quote, art is a great st stimulus to life. How could one understand it as purposeless, as aimless, as lar poor lar. African writer Shunua Shebe is more scathing when he says, quote, art for art's sake is just another, just another piece of deodorized dog, uh, dog poop, 
I sanitize the coat with the word poop, if you know what I mean. Okay, when it comes to education, one sees similar and even more passionate arguments as to what it should be. The complexities involved in creating a world-class university are immense. And while the university has the potential to last for centuries, it becomes a reality only if successive administrators, starting from the beginning, faculty and students, build the university with caution and care. It should be nurtured with at most dedication. Okay, even the tallest tree in the world, hundreds of feet tall, which are hundreds of years old, when, you start, when it started, it, it cannot be thrown to the vicissitude of the winds. It has to be nurtured with care. I will now talk about the various features that facilitate continuity and longevity. University education, as we know now and follow worldwide, started in the West. Although great universities like Nalanda, with very different structures, existed in India long before that, the University of Bologna in Italy, founded in 1088, is widely known as the first university in the world. It started as a law school. Currently, it has 85 students, 85,000 students in programs varying from engineering to science to humanities. Like Shivnadar University, it is still expanding. I'm happy to tell you that we just signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Bologna, Bologna for student exchange and faculty collaboration. I asked them why they came to us. And the response was that they are not just looking for any collaboration. They wanted to be with the best institutions in select countries, and that's why they came to Shivnadar University. <laughs> the oldest university in the world, working with one of the newest in India, how remarkable is that? If one follows the evolution of universities through medieval times up to 15th century and early modern times, which is really late 15th century to 18th century, university taught natural philosophy, logic, medicine, theology, mathematics, astrology, law, and so on. But in early modern times, humanism started affecting education. The critical mindset imparted by humanism caused changes in universities and scholarship. In fact, some believe that the scientific revolution could have been spawned by the effect of humanism on scholars in natural sciences and medicine. So humanism really means humanities, okay? In most schools, especially ones stressing applied curricula like engineering universities, humanities is mostly a checkbox. At Shivnada Universities, we have designed a curriculum which is holistic and emphasizes humanities, and we have cross-curriculum courses that are compulsory for every student. This feature, which fosters and encourages inquiring minds, is a major differentiator as compared with any other school in this country. If one looks at universities that have historically affected the society's march towards betterment, they all have strong humanities and so social studies, just like Shivnada University. It is important to emphasize also how we at Shivnada University aspire to make social impact. It is through new and innovative ideas, as it should be from a university. Yes, on this aspect, it is not just law for law. It is education with a purpose. As a university, we want to offer solutions to what the society needs, not particularly what it wants. This country has more than a billion people, and most of them are not living comfortably. The society is crying out for help. I read an article five days ago in, in one of the English newspapers written by Stanford Think Tank about India's dwindling water supply, groundwater supply, that, and that's going to soon cause a crisis. Well, 
Just two weeks ago, your university announced a new master's program on water sciences and policy. A coincidence? Not really. After a year of detailed and deliberate thinking by Dr. Mihir Shah. Is he here? No, it's not. Okay. And uh, our distinguished professor, uh, he is currently our distinguished professor and is a former member of the planning commission and a team came up with the master's program on water. We are doing it because this country needs it. In fact, truly the world needs it. Okay, we have experts from other countries that are teaching it because, like I said, truly the world needs it. They are all collaborating with us. We are, but that is not the only part of this university. We are also planning to work on matters of national security. We are, uh, and with a soon to be signed memorandum of uh, understanding with the Center for Joint Welfare Studies that is run by the central government. This is a consequence of discussions with some fine and distinguished men who served as lieutenant generals in, in the army and also the military secretary. I, I believe they are in the audience today. Last, I want to bring out, bring out a feature that we believe is relevant for a modern day university. Here again, I'll refer to Dr. Dijkstra, but his opinion is quite the opposite of the path that we want to pursue. Dr. Dijkstra refers to what is called the Buxton, Buxton Index, which is defined as the length of the period measured in years over which an organization makes its plans. As he shows, for a street vendor, it may be he has to plan he or she for less than a day. For companies like HCL Technologies or DXC, it may be the time between quarterly reports or yearly reports. Uh, and for a politician in India, no, I don't want to talk about Indian politics. Say the President of the United States, this Buxom Index is four years, the time between re-election. And for the universities, it's a, perhaps it's a longer, okay. What Dijkstra states is joint work between entities with large Buxton Index differences will, are bound to fail because of mutual accusations of either short-sightedness, the university may say that the industries are short-sighted, but the industry might say, you know, they may blame the universities of freewheeling and neglect of agreement. So he advises against industry-university projects. I must disagree. We at Shivnada University believe that the graduates in a rapidly changing world with shifting technology and work habits and blurring lines between social and business structures, it is imperative that a student is exposed to working in a collaborative research, whether it is another university with similar Buxton, Buxton Index or through industry-sponsored project as a term project. These experiences teach our students how to adapt. We are not saying that we should be offering solutions to world problems at Twitter speed, which some people might be doing. No, we are not twits. But our new age university will continue to be successful decades into the future, only by being agile and adept and training our graduates to be adapt, to adapt. As you can see, Shivnada University is LAR, Paul LAR, and a lot more. The University Grants Commission in their inspection report acknowledged just that fact by commenting that Shivnada University is providing, quote, an unprecedented, well-rounded education, unquote. This is why the government of India selected as one of the 10 universities out of 1,723 1, academic institutions to avoid, uh, to award the prestigious Atoll Incubation Center.
This would not have happened but for our dynamic Vice Chancellor Rupa Ghosh standing over there. Thanks, Rupa. Back to graduating students. On this very special day, I'd like to congratulate each and every one of you for being a part of this dream called Shivnadar University. I am sure that with the education and training that you received, you have the tools to realize your own dreams. On Tuesday, just past Tuesday, I was at the Adivasi Academy in Tejgar, Gujarat, where they teach 60 children of migrant, migrant parents every year, every year after assessing their learning gaps. It is a huge success in bringing societally lost tribes who constitute about 11% of Indian population and speak 700 bhashas and whose income is lower than 90% of the people in this country. I was overwhelmed by the volunteer spirit of the doctor from Bihar who is working there who has administered medical care to more than 200,000, 225,000 Adivasis. Our own director of HSS, Dr. Ajay Nandekar here, volunteered in building the first classroom in 2003. So they are, what they are doing is they are facilitating many, many young kids to perhaps formulate their dreams. So now I have a request for you. Let each one of you be a dream facilitator at least for one other Indian. Dream big. Follow your dreams with good old fashioned hard work and you will attain your goals. Good luck. Varha Bharatam. In my incomparable incom mother tongue called Tamil, it means long live India. Thank you.